this is a collab video, whoop, whoop, whoop. And I encourage any YouTuber friend or teacher tuber friend that would like to participate in this collab with Roxanne and me, please do so. I cannot wait, this is gonna be fun. I am going to tell you about Howard Garner, the founder of the Multiple Intelligences Theory. I will take a multiple intelligence quiz and I encourage you to do the same. And I'm gonna reveal my results to you guys. I am also gonna tell you how I would use multiple intelligences to teach middle school me. We're wasting time. <laughs>Hello hotties, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. I'm Ali Mack and I am currently a seventh grade math teacher. You know, while you're here, please click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any other videos from me. Do it now. So in this video, it is a collaboration video and I haven't done one of these in a while with my newest favorite YouTuber, Roxanne. To go to her channel, the link is in the description below. And together, Roxanne and myself are going to give you probably more information than you possibly want or even asked for on Howard Garner and his theory of multiple intelligences. Now, after you watch my video, you, you know you gotta go to Roxanne's video, right? You, you just gotta go, oh, oh, oh. And if you're coming from Roxanne's video, hi, it's good to see you. I'm glad you're here. Hopefully I can convince you to stay by the time this video is over. You know, the subscribe button, it's, it's free. It's just right there. Yep. So when Roxanne and myself decided to talk about a collaboration video, she decided that her part in this video was going to be to tell you about Howard Garner's multiple intelligences, what they are, and all that amazing stuff that will help you serve your students. Now, my part in the video is I want to give you a biography on Howard Garner because I just love learning about people. Learning about people might, may or may not be one of my strengths. Now, once again, if you are a teacher tuber and you would like to join this collaboration, it's very easy. All you have to do is do a screen recording of you taking the little quiz in the description box. You have to reveal your results and you have to tell what, what you were like as whatever grade you teach. So for example, I teach seventh grade, so I'm going to tell how I would teach seventh grade me. And Roxanne teaches fifth grade, so she's gonna tell how she would teach fifth grade her. And we're both gonna tell you what we were like at that age. So tell us what you were like at the age of the grade you're teaching, take the quiz, and then you're gonna come up with three ways you would possibly have taught yourself when you were that age. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, leave a comment and I'll try to clear it up. We have a lot to talk about. This, this introduction is way longer than it should be. So I'm ready if you are. Okay, so to start off my portion of this collaboration, let me tell you about some of Howard Garner's achievements. Okay, so first, first and foremost, I would like to wish Howard Garner a very happy belated birthday. His birthday was July 11th, which wasn't very long ago, but in 1943, making him 78 years old. He is best known for the multiple intelligences theory. I would also like to add that after Howard Gardner had a lot of studying, a lot of research, and a lot of life experiences, he realized that IQ tests were pretty much bogus because they did not include questions and ways to assess the other intelligences. He is quoted as saying, everyone can be taught in more than one way. I love that. He also changed the way people view education for the better. During his 78 trips around the sun, he achieved his bachelor's degree in social relations in 1965 and his PhD in developmental psychology in 1971. This is all from Harvard University, by the way. All right, all right, Howard Garner, look at you with your bad self going to Harvard, okay, woo woo. Howard Garner was appointed the John H. and Elizabeth A. Hobbs Professor of Cognition and Education in 1998, and this was at Harvard Graduate School of Education. He is the author of 30 books that are translated into 32 different languages, including his memoir that came out in 2020 titled A Synthesizing Mind. 
hey, all of you that love to read like I do, you might wanna check it out. I haven't checked it out, but I might. He received numerous awards and honors. In fact, Howard Garner has 31 honorary degrees internationally in colleges and universities throughout the world, which is so pretty darn cool. And he has also audited more classes at Harvard than anyone else. So not only does he have his official degrees, he's also just keeps obtaining that knowledge. Howard Garner is a brilliant piano player. He even taught piano for 11 years. He has been married twice. He has four children and five grandchildren. He saved his parents' lives before he was even born. Wanna know more? I'm gonna tell you anyway. Now, whether you choose to click off is up to you or whether you decide to stay and listen to how this genius saved his parents' lives before he was even born, I, I suggest you stick around. So here it goes. Howard Garner's parents were Jewish Germans living in Germany. Now, when Hitler came into power, they decided that they need to get out of there. So they went to Italy and in Italy, they had a son named Eric. Now, whenever Hitler decided to collab with Mussolini, they decided they need to get out of there. So they moved back to Germany. The dad, Ralph, pulled some strings. He just did a lot of work to get his family relocated to the United States of America. When they arrived to New York City, United States, they had $5 in their pocket. That's like a very common story, but they had $5 in their pocket. It was the night of the broken glass. And forgive me for not being able to pronounce this next word. So I found it pronunciated so I would get it right. Here it is. Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht. Now, once they were here and on that night, many of the Garner's relatives were injured or killed. And in 1943, their son, Eric Garner, died in a freak sledding accident. Now, they were the family, the parents were very discouraged at this time. Obviously, they lost their son. Meanwhile, Mama Gardner was pregnant with Howard, and they said that they would have killed themselves had they not been pregnant with their newest child. So, because he was coming and he was on the way and they loved their child, they decided not to kill themselves. So, Howard Gardner saved his parents' lives before he was even born. Such a good story. Story. He already accomplished something pretty darn amazing before he took his first breath. Go Howard! So now that you have some background on Howard Garner, we are going to take this multiple intelligence quiz and I'm going to share my results with you. So let's do that real quick. So follow the link to literacynet.org and you're going to assess your strengths. You're going to find out how you are smart. Notice the directions. Five describes you exactly and one does not describe you at all. Now, just go through and answer the questions. Some of the questions kind of have me stumped because one says, I like hunting and fishing. I like to fish, I just don't like to hunt and I always throw the fish back. So this is basically me taking the quizzy poo. I'd also like to add that there are lots of these quizzes online. You can even get a paper copy for your students, but I plan on letting them use this one. I've made it to the end. Now let's see what my results are. Now, as you can see, my strongest is social. Next is language. And then lastly, self. And as you can see, this quiz gives you lesson suggestions for students that are strong in this category and i would really take an inventory of what your students know so that way you can plan your lessons according to your students strengths and also throw in one or two that is not their strength which will allow them to grow and isn't that what we want all right so here's the part in the video where i tell you what i was like as a middle schooler um, my attitude and behavior, I was very shy. I really wouldn't talk to people unless they talked to me first. Um, very introverted, kind of uneasy around people. Went to school from kindergarten to fourth grade while I was in Mississippi. We moved to Texas, Plano, for my fifth grade year. I was very shy and timid. Didn't really talk to people unless they talked to me. And then when I got to middle school, 
you know, middle school is where you start to figure out who you are. I noticed in sixth grade, people kept walking all over me. I was the type of person that had maybe one really good friend and just didn't talk to too many people, but I wanted to. I just was too shy to be a part of that fun, good group, right? Whenever I took tests upon arriving to this new school, I was below grade average, grade level, academically. And I was in remedial reading classes for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Now, luckily for me, when they gave me that end post-test at the end of eighth grade, I was actually on a ninth grade level. So I had managed to go from below grade level to the next grade, which was where I was supposed to be. So, all right, Texas, you guys got your stuff going on. I don't know, they, they knew what they were doing and they were able to get me up to where I needed to be. Now, I cannot talk about my middle school life without talking about my big sister. We're gonna call her Jilly Mac, okay? So basically, Jilly, was very popular. She made friends very easily. Um, anytime I had friends, they were always curious about who she was. When I got to seventh grade and had my first boyfriend or what not, you know, talking on the phone, boyfriend, you know how it is. Uh, they always had a crush on my big sister. It was really around seventh grade that I started to come out of my shell and not let people walk all over me. Like I was, so super sweet but the second someone was rude to me I turned not so nice and near the end of seventh and eighth grade I started getting into things that perhaps I shouldn't have gotten into however they were good life lessons for the future not to call out my big sister Jilly because uh, you know our mom watches my videos thanks mom anyway she was a very bad influence I just thought she was so cool. And no matter what she did, I wanted to do it. So yeah, we're just gonna leave it at that because this channel is G. This was also the time in middle school where I became very, very sassy. I got to where I could just argue with anybody about anything. And sometimes I forget that I have that ability until I'm in that situation. Now, when I was a middle schooler, I was interested in making friends. However, I was too shy to make friends, but I basically wanted to be included with the groups, but I didn't want to be put in a small group. I wanted to work whole group, like the whole class interacting together, because then that would give me a chance to talk to people I found interesting, but was too shy to talk to. I was a cheerleader in eighth grade, but it almost didn't count because if you paid the money for the uniform and signed up, you could be a cheerleader. So there was like 50 cheerleaders. But either way, it was still fun. My mom cannot find any photos, but we were the Carpenter Cowboys. That was in Plano, Texas. So now this is the part in the video where I'm going to kind of give you an example of how I would teach middle school me if I was a student in my classroom, assuming that the Howard Gardner test was the same as it was today. One thing we need to point out and realize is just because a child is strong in one area, that does not mean they cannot learn in the other ones, even ones where they are the weakest, because part of the whole thing is to challenge you and to get you to think outside the box. So I just wanted to point that out. But, but one good place to start is to incorporate, say, three of these um, learning styles into each lesson. So let me just give you an example of what that would look like. Okay. So say I was teaching statistics, and of course we have to deal with the vocabulary of the mean, median, mode, and range. I don't know about y'all students, but my students have a hard time grasping this concept, especially the vocabulary. So say I was teaching myself, and I was going to incorporate three of the learning styles. I wouldn't necessarily just incorporate the ones that where I am strong. So if I was teaching about statistics and I wanted them to know about the mean, median, mode, and range, I would have a song playing on repeat. Um, it's my favorite one to use. You can find it on YouTube. It's the Me, Medium, Mode, and Range song. And I might even be brave enough to sing it to you because I'm in one of those jolly moods. But basically, I would have this song on repeat as they are entering the room, and I would encourage them to sing along with me. I'm going to sing the song for you. Please don't make fun of me. I might even speed it up in editing because, you know, it goes like this. Hey diddle diddle, the median's the middle, you add and divide for the mean. The mode is the one that you see the most, and the range is the difference between. Yeah! 
Okay, that's, that's the best I can do, really, really. <laughs> we would sing it over and over again. We would do this for about five to seven minutes, but that repetitiveness and having it in a song, I think that might help them differentiate it differentiate between the vocabulary. Obviously, that would be geared towards musical intelligence, but people that are not strong with music would also benefit. I would then have a friendly competition. I like to scoot a desk in the middle of, like right in front of the board and put one of those little uh, hotel bells, you know, ding, and have just kind of like a round the world style, pull up my first two people, they go against each other, and show them a word, which of these terms is known as the average. And then whoever gets right, ding, they get the answer, they get to stay up, the next person comes up. So basically, this would help with the social, have a bunch of these practice questions on the board, and that would help the social and the language, because it helps with vocabulary. And lastly in the lesson, I would give kids an activity sheet where they had to calculate the mean, median, mode, and range for different data sets, and then I would have them complete a writing prompt I like to call List, Link, Learn. They would list everything they knew about the lesson before they came in, you know, the stuff they learned from previous grades. Then they would link what they learned in the lesson to something in their life. You could tell me that you used the mean to figure out their average for their grade, you know, and so forth and so on. They could basically just tell me how we can relate this or link this to their life. Last part is my favorite. They would write down what they learned. Now, there are some kids I just want to thump them in the head when they're like, I didn't learn anything. I knew everything. And I'm like, Rrr. but anyway, you'll probably have one or two of those. But list, link, learn. So this particular activity would be towards the self because it would be done independently. They would have that quiet time to practice and they could reflect on what they learned, what they did before. It's kind of like that KWL chart. So that's how one way I would use it to teach middle school me. Another way would be to create a choice board. And I might have talked about these in previous videos. You can find these on the internet or you can create your own. But basically, it's like a tic-tac-toe board and there's nine spots. Eight of the squares would be an activity that is geared to interest each of the intelligences. And you would tell the students they must complete three activities. So not only does it give the kid a choice of how they show how they know it, it also could give the kids that like to work together an option to go work together. And I like choices because some days I'm in the mood to talk and be social. Other days I want to sit at my desk and work well. So I like the choice board idea. I did it a lot when I taught science. Okay, so the third way I would use this multiple intelligence information is I would put the kids in groups based on the same intelligences. And so basically these would be like the same things you would see on the tic-tac-toe board, um, except for the kids would only have one activity they had to do and it was to what they were the strongest in, which intelligence they were the strongest in, and they could work on it collaboratively. So then at the end, they could all present their projects so they could see the information in a different way. The importance here is that it's the same skill, but they're having different ways to show and practice what they know and what they're learning. And also this way, like-minded students could work together and possibly make some friends in the meantime. All right, you guys, that is it for this video. If you found it helpful, informative, or even entertaining, please like, share, and subscribe. Now, if you haven't already, please go check out Roxanne's video so you can get the full scope of what each intelligence is and figure out what she was like as a fifth grader and also how would she use Howard Garner's multiple intelligences in her classroom. Once again, I think this is the third time I mentioned it. If you are a teacher tuber and you would like to participate in this collaboration, we would love to have a high schooler perspective. We've got elementary, we've got middle school, we need a high schooler. But if you're neither, if you're not high schooler, you can collaborate, we would love it. But make sure you let us know so we can check out your video too. I need you guys to comment below. One of two things. One, go take the quiz real quick, come back and tell me what your strongest intelligence is. Or if you don't feel like doing that right now, comment the brain. And as always, you all have the best day ever and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.